Good morning, Dale here from Verbeck Animal Health. I have Dr. Hensi Lotokhan here with us. He's going to just give us a reminder on the best practices of dosing and injecting your animals to ensure that we get the best out of whatever remedy we are using. So over to Hensi. All right, thanks, Dale. Let's get started. Good morning. We are going to look at injecting sheep today. But before we start, there's a few things we must keep in mind. The first is different remedies have different injection sites and also different dosages. So we need to know the weight of the sheep in, in order to work out the correct dosage. Um, secondly, um, we need to know the, where to inject. Is it subcutaneous under the skin or intramuscular into the muscle? And thirdly, we must know the withdrawal time. When is it safe to use the meat or the milk again? And in order to do that, we have to read the instructions first. And every drug should have a package insert which gives you all the relevant information about how much, where to inject, and what the, the remedy is effective against. If you don't have the package insert, most of the time it will also be on the box. You can also make sure of how to use the drug directly on the box. Um, when we inject sheep, we have to realize that there are different injection sites and there are different drugs. Some are more viscose than others and for that, that will influence the type and the length of needle that we use. There are also drugs that may stay in the wool, so for that we we'll try and use a longer needle. Um, the sites where we inject sheep is either under the skin or intramuscular. And um, for intramuscular we normally use a slightly longer needle than for subcutaneous. But as I said, if it's something that may stain the wool, like for instance this product here, then we'll use a slightly longer needle for the subcut injection as well. Here we have some examples of different types of needles. This one at one side here is a 16 gauge half an inch needle, the shortest. The middle one is a one inch needle, 20 gauge, and this one on the other side is a one inch 18 gauge needle. The so it's from short to, to, to long. This you use for intramuscular, these two for subcutaneous. Um, and the gauge is the thickness of the needle. So it works in this way that the higher the gauge, the thinner the needle. And the lower the gauge, the thicker the needle. When we get to the equipment, always make sure that your equipment is in good working order, that you've got enough sharp needles to use and when filling up the syringe make sure that you get rid of all the air bubbles inside the syringe. We are now going to inject a product called Biocide F which is very yellow and can lead to wood staining. So I've chosen a little bit a longer needle, a three quarter inch needle to make sure that we don't get leakage. The fact that we see staining and we, it may come from leakage shows us that even all the other products that we inject, we may also have a problem with leaking, like your vaccines. If you only inject one cc and you lose a few drops, you're not getting the full dose. So rather go for a slightly longer needle and do a proper job. And then with other rice, you don't want to do it fast, you want to do it properly. So we're going to try and fill this up and get rid of all the bubbles if I can show you. When we inject sheep, there are two sites that we can use. The one is subcutaneous, that means under the skin, and the one is intramuscular. Um, for subcutaneous injections, there are three sites we can use. Um, I prefer in front of the shoulder, behind the shoulder, in the axilla. When you inject subcutaneously, just make sure that you don't inject in a place where if you get a reaction to that drug, it will affect the sheep. I know some people like to inject in the cheek because there is no wool, especially with wool breeds. But if you get a problem there, that sheep can't eat properly. And there is also a lot of nerves and blood vessels coming out from below the jaw that may be damaged and that will also affect the sheep. When you inject um, in the axilla, 
always do it behind the elbow, not under into the axilla. Don't pull the front leg forward and then inject into the axilla. Do it behind. That will also prevent that sheet from going lame if you have a reaction to the injection. Also never inject on the shoulder, either in front or behind the shoulder. We inject subcutaneously. It's important to lift the skin up, to tent the skin. I know it's fast and easy to just jab the needle in, but it's not the proper way and you're not going to get the desired result. So pick up the skin, tent it slightly, and preferably from the top, put it in and inject. You can even just massage it downwards into the, the injection site. Um, the other area where we inject is behind the, the shoulder, as you said, never on the shoulder. Um, and the same principle there, tent the skin, put the needle in, inject, take the needle out. The same with the one in the axilla, tent the skin, put the needle in, let go, inject, and just rub it downwards into the injection site. That is that for subcutaneous injections.